In the United States, on the night before Christmas, a black teenager was shot dead after he allegedly pointed a gun at the officer in a town near Ferguson, Missouri, the scene of a prior police shooting that sparked nationwide protests. The U.S. has reached boiling points recently with weeks of protests against police brutality, like in New York City. Is this incident going to push the U.S. over the edge? Stay tuned to this edition of the debate as we look into why these types of crimes keeps occurring, namely a white law enforcement officer killing an African-American. The focus is back on St. Louis, Missouri, where massive protests against police racial profiling began. This time, clashes erupt in a suburb next to Ferguson, the flashpoint of protests. The protesters are outraged by the death of a black teenager fatally shot by officers at a gas station in Berkeley. The victim has been identified as 18-year-old Antonio Martin. Witnesses said he was unarmed, though police claim they shot him after he pulled a handgun. He was shot in an area that's notorious for racial profiling and police abuse. Uh, he was allowed to die without being given medical care. As I speak to you, there are scores of angry people and there are allegations that the police have tried to plant a weapon on this boy. Racial oppression is what America has always been. Cities across the U.S. have been rocked by protests over the past weeks. They were initially triggered by a grand jury failure to indict the officer who killed unarmed black man Michael Brown in Ferguson in August. A string of contentious decisions to not pursue police killings have followed. On Tuesday, another policeman was cleared of any wrongdoing by a grand jury in Houston, Texas. The officer had shot dead 26-year-old Jordan Baker back in January. Meanwhile, a protest was held in Wisconsin over a separate case. It came after the Milwaukee County District Attorney failed to press charges against a white officer who killed a mentally ill black man eight months ago. New York was another flashpoint. There, thousands of protesters defied Mayor Bill de Blasio's calls for a halt in rallies until after the funerals of two officers shot in Brooklyn over the weekend. The protesters called for justice for victims of racial profiling. However, analysts say the cycle of failed indictments will continue as police are allowed to continue their perceived crime. Protesters in New York have vowed to keep pouring into the streets until the government proves its sincerity in responding to their demands. Other cities are acting out that announcement. The process is apparently set to continue as there seems to be no end to failed indictments of officers fatally shooting black citizens. Our guest for this edition of the debate, Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, Amali Yeshitala, joins us from Tampa. We have the Congressional Defense Policy Advisor, Frederick Peterson, who joins us from Washington. Chairman, welcome. Amila Yeshitala, let me start with you. The worst place for this incident to have taken place, not that it should even take place, but in Missouri again. And of course, protests have followed. Arrests have been made. Valiant part of the protests. Is this one death too many? Well, we can say it's one death too many. But the reality is that while we are looking at this particular death, we've seen evidence of police violence occurring throughout this country against African people. And it is uh, something that we are going to continue to see as long as African people exist in this country as a subject and colonized people. I think that what we see with the, this recent execution of Antonio Martin uh, is America being exposed to the world. Uh, where it has been able to preen and, and pose on the world stage as a beacon for democracy, uh, as the shining uh, city on the hill. Uh, people are beginning to understand that the violence that America is exporting throughout the world uh, is something that has its origin right here in this country, uh, partially as a part of the process of actually stealing the very land that we uh, on now and, and putting uh, the indigenous people in concentration camps called Indian reservations, the theft of half of Mexico, and the enslavement of African people here. 
It is no accident that the majority of people who are imprisoned in this country, who suffer poverty and oppression in this country, are Mexicans, Africans, and so-called indigenous people. So uh, you can say it's a death to many, but what really is occurring is that the African population in this country, after having been crushed in terms of the resistance of African people, Frederick Peterson, do you agree? Uh, unquestionably not. Uh, what we have here is the most fanciful, at best, and utterly exploitive, cynical manipulation and exploitation of blacks in the United States by someone posing as their own. I would submit that what we have just heard presented is an utterly fantastic rendition of the status of blacks in the United States, the status of the United States itself, and the integrity of its borders, and the aspirations the, of good and valid and upreaching blacks that are being cynically manipulated by these forces of chaos and darkness, we should say, not blackness, but darkness and evil within the heart that is manipulating their own people in order to create the chaos that will enable them to achieve power. And this is the, the ancient struggle. It is almost biblical. We, we see the biblical injunction, by their fruits you shall know them, and what we have here is the bitter fruit of manipulation and cynicism and stirring up trouble with lies. The truth of the matter is that this individual was shot, and it is evident to all who see on the internet, by raising a pistol and pointing it at an officer, then he was shot. To call this an atrocity by the officer acting in self-defense against a raised gun against him, I urge your viewers to go on the internet. It's all there. The security cameras captured this entire Very incident. Well. Let's get the let's and get a reaction. As far as the let's Michael uh, Brown. Hold on, hold on, Freddie Peterson. Let's get a reaction then from Omali uh, Yeshitila on this. Go ahead, Omali. He wants to he wants to characterize what I have to say about this situation as fanciful. Is the fact that in this country Africans over the last two years have, who have encountered police have been 21 times more likely to die than white people with those encounters. Is that fanciful? Is it fanciful that we live uh, in a country where with this huge prison population, where one out of every eight human beings in prison in the world today is an African in this country? This country is notorious for having murdered the indigenous population here, stolen half of Mexico, and, and enslaved African people, and we've been struggling since that time uh, to win our freedom. And if we have a pause in that struggle, it has simply been because the United States has succeeded two generations ago in crushing, murdering people like Martin Luther King, murdering people like Malcolm X, destroying the Black Panther Party, which is something that the Attorney General of the United States said in 1969 when he came to power that by, by the end of the year he would have destroyed the Black Panther Party. So don't talk to us about fanciful. What is fanciful is this notion that you've been able uh, to promote around the world of America being this beacon for democracy. What is fanciful is somehow that America can travel all over the world and murder people and call it being uh, something that's going to assist and help the people. What is fanciful is the fact that, yes, you can drag out uh, every now and then what you would call a decent, uh, good Negro to parrot the line of white power. But the reality of our conditions of existence is something that anybody can okay. see. It's not fanciful. It's the, the data speaks for itself. Frederick Peterson. Well, <laughs> the actual facts condemn the words and the fanciful descriptions that are being offered by this uh, gentleman on the other side. The fact is that Martin Luther King, who we celebrate as a holiday in the United States, happened to have been a Republican, not a socialist, as the, the uh, gentleman on the uh, other side is, not even a Democrat, but a Republican of good and high virtue and value that is honored with a national holiday 
by all Americans and who is respected and revered in he's, American he's history dead. as having he's stood dead. up for high principles. He's dead. He's, you talk about revered. Yep. You, you're talking Here, about revered and standing up for America. It was Martin Luther me. King who said that America is the greatest purview of violence in the world. Are you, may I He's continue dead. without being you interrupted? Talk about, you gave, so you kill may a I leader, continue? you well, kill a leader and then give the people a, a holiday? <laughs> Frederick Peterson, are, are you amusing yourself with this, uh, this assertion? He has a holiday. He was given a holiday and is widely revered in the United States. If this debate is about Martin Luther King, I would be delighted to engage in it. But this debate is about a police officer that is being charged by the other side in a cynical manipulation of fact with defending himself against an upraised and pointed pistol. When, what we have is the police in this country represent the standards of order within a society standing against the chaos that this gentleman represents. What he is seeking is chaos in order to manipulate the society to achieve an overthrow of constitutional order and individual liberty in order to achieve some socialist nirvana which never has existed on the face of the earth. Very well. You, you the, just accused them of that. The we need to get a reaction. You just leveled an accusation against our guest there. Frederick Pearson, history. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just leveled an accusation sure. against our guest in Tampa. Amali uh, Yeshitala, yes. go ahead. What is your response to that? First of all, what I want to say, it's not about a single policeman who approached someone who may have had a gun. It is about the fact that the police function as an occupying force, an occupying army in the African community in this country. It is a fact that the police function as an occupying military force in Mexican barrios throughout this country. So we're not talking just about an individual policeman. If that were the case, then we wouldn't be looking at all of the other deaths by police in this country that's going on right now, that in full public view. So it's not a question of a single policeman. The other thing I want to say is you talk about a constitutional order. You're talking about a constitution which, when it was created, had African people enslaved and characterized as only three-fifths of a human being. You're talking about a constitution that, that uh, was founded on a land that was stolen from a whole people that's been dispossessed and don't even get mentioned unless they're in the room. So don't, don't sing to us about the wonders of America and what a great place it is and how constitutional order. The fact the police organization in this country today was founded from slave catchers and from the Texas Rangers to kill and keep the land stolen from the Mexicans and the indigenous people. That's where the police come from. So this constitutional order that you are talking about is meaningless in the face of the terror and oppression that people experience, black people experience in this country, Mexicans and indigenous people, and that's the reality. Okay, Frederick Peterson, I know you have a reaction, but let me get, a, let me get this question in here, Frederick Peterson. Obviously, there's a problem. I'm sure you'll agree with that. And here we are uh, in a few hours' time, based on our time at least, it's going to be Christmas. People are at home. But in uh, Ferguson uh, and in Missouri in particular, not to mention in New York, there are a lot of mad people, the protests that have been going on now for quite some time. This may have tipped the scale. Something needs to be done. How should it be dealt with? People are angry. The people who are angry are being instigated and manipulated by such as the gentleman uh, that is your other guest. This is utterly disgusting. It is vile, it is immoral, it is untrue, and it is the ancient struggle of good and order versus evil and chaos we're seeing played out. What we have is an advocate on the other side of chaos, not of good order and discipline and high virtue, but we have just the opposite. And the worst import of this is uh, not upon the United States, it is upon the blacks within the United States that are not being offered jobs by this gentleman, they are not being offered high virtue and value, they aren't being offered a good, sound, solid, moral upbringing, 
They are being offered chaos and violence, and this serves no one's purpose. Very well. The police I gotta are get not a reaction. black I, I, this, police I, this, or Again, white my apologies. Police. My apologies, but there's a lot that you're saying there. Amali Yeshitela, go ahead. You have your pick. There, there, there's nothing more moral. Uh, there's nothing more virtuous than an oppressed and enslaved people fighting for freedom. I can't find a higher morality than that. I can find a higher virtue than that. Simply talking about how something, some people are not good or they're evil or not preaching morality in the face of the objective reality that we're confronted with is meaningless. I would like to hear uh, Mr. Peterson talk about the reality that we as African people are confronted with in this country. I would like to, uh, to talk about uh, uh, simply uh, bad-mouthing me and calling me uh, horrible, evil names. That is no substitute for dealing with the essential problems that we have. You can't say that all these people who are in motion throughout this country, every place in this country because of police murder, are somehow being manipulated by me or by people like me. What people are being inflamed by is the reality that we are confronted with in America. And what we uh, find ourselves also being upset about is apologies for American terror uh, by such persons as you. And the other thing I would say that somebody from the congressional defense policy uh, or who is a congressional defense policy advisor understands very clearly, you're talking about who's trying to manipulate people to try and frame this discussion uh, in some arena of virtue and good and bad without talking about the fact that the police functions as an organ of state power. It doesn't matter what the individual thinks, uh, whether he's good or bad. The fact is that the state has a particular function. And mm. in this country, the state was consolidated through killing Indians, taking their land, and oppressing and enslaving African people. That okay. is the state. So well, it's not a matter of whether the cop was good or bad. Well, uh, Frederick Peterson, uh, when, I, when I hear your comments, Frederick Peterson, uh, I, I, when you say uh, uh, them, uh, you're separating yourself, and I'm assuming whites, from African Americans. That was my take. Now, I'm looking at the 14th Amendment. No, I have not. Well, that's the way that it's coming across, and I think that points to part of the problem. Let me, the 14th let me Amendment rephrase. says The 14th Amendment says that it's equal rights. Every application in the United States that you fill out says regardless of race, color, ethnicity, etc. But isn't that the bulk of the problem? These types of viewpoints that I'm taking from you or I'm getting from you it's putting a division there. Isn't that where the problem lies in some respects? Uh, no, absolutely just the reverse. I am not putting a division there. I am a describing community organization of chaos, which your other guest represents. Community organization of chaos, which is the enemy of whites, blacks, purples, oranges, and blues. It is the enemy of order and is almost the biblical voice of chaos and darkness that is the eternal struggle between good and evil being played out. When someone raises a pistol against you and threatens your life, whether you are a police officer or not, this is not a black threat. It is not a white threat. It is a threat to life which was addressed. And then to take that threat and to attempt to use it to stir up community resentment is a lie. It is an exploitation. It is certainly not in any tradition of Martin Luther King or of any of Ben Carson or any worthy black leaders who are among the best that America has in its tradition. What we have here is evil. Okay, With well, a capital let's bring in e. some facts. And let's it bring must in some be facts that by spell all this of good out. Faith. You tell me what you think about these facts, and I'd like to address this uh, uh, to you first, Amalia Yeshitela. Uh, our guest, Frederick Peterson, talks about this in, in such a way it calls you somebody who's uh, inciting things. I'm looking at a list of facts here, Huffington Post from New York. Uh, once arrested, blacks are more likely to remain in prisons awaiting trial than whites. Alarming facts number two. African Americans are frequently illegally excluded from criminal jury service. That's according to a June 2010 study uh, by the Equal Justice Initiative. Alarming fact number three, only three to five percent of criminal cases go to trial. The rest are plea bargain. Most African American defendants never get a trial. So Frederick Peterson, can't you see these facts being out there? 
Hence, our guest there in Tampa is a culmination of these facts. Go ahead, Frederick Peterson. What you're doing is you're taking selective snippets that present a, a, a patois of, uh, uh, of falsity. This is coming from a left-wing website. It does not address who is committing large number of murders against blacks. Do you know who they are? No, go ahead. Blacks in the inner city. And it's the, it's the police officers, black and, and, what of, and white and of whatever race, that are standing as a thin blue line of civilization against the chaos that uh, these things represent. The facts you represent didn't describe the, um, the numbers of blacks who die of gunfire in the inner cities okay. by other blacks. I can and come it up, is the police I can come who up with stand lots of, I as come their up lots shield of facts. against I got, that I got chaos. about uh, 30 seconds left here. Amali Ishitala, your closing yes. th uh, comments here. You could see our guest, our Frederick Peterson. He's got his mind made up, it seems. Go ahead. Well, the, the fact is that, that we're struggling with the reality uh, that African people exist in this country as a colonized uh, subject population. There's no way you can get around it. All of the data reflects that reality. And name calling won't change that. Uh, what has to happen is that African people have to achieve control of our own lives. Uh, clearly, it cannot be entrusted in the hands of the United States. That's why we call for black community control of the police. Uh, that's why we called uh, and are initiating a black people's grand jury in Ferguson that's going to happen January 3rd and 4th of this year so that we can come together and examine all the facts that had to do uh, with the murder of Mike Brown so that we can uh, build a situation where African people ourselves will be in control of those people with guns who are in our communities and we won't have to have the mistakes uh, that we see now. And it's really interesting that people are talking about a video uh, where uh, the policeman who in Berkeley didn't have the body uh, uh, video that he was supposed to be wearing and then and did not even capture anything on the okay. cam, on the dash camera from the police jump in, uh, we're fresh out of car. time. Thank you very so much for that. So that's the reality. Thank you very much. Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, Amali Yeshitala, talking to us from Tamba. And thank you, Frederick Peterson. I'm sorry I jumped in uh, so many times when you were talking. Congressional Defense Policy Advisor who talked to us from Washington. Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of The Debate. From Ikawa and the rest of the team here in the Capitol, Tehran, is goodbye.